virgin most powerful radio, sharing the gospel with clarity and charity. I'm a soldier for Christ. I'm a soldier for Christ. I'm a soldier. No, they'll never take us under, because we're bringing truth like thunder. Raining on your speakers like a ton of bricks Hold the cross high cause we're Catholics Fight the good fight with the truth Stand tall with the truth I'm a warrior for Christ I'm in love with the truth Love God, save souls, slay error Go stronger Welcome to the Terry and Jesse show Yes, uh, Jesse will be back tomorrow. He just called me about 30 minutes ago, I guess down in Santa Clarita where he was staying. There's a power went off and he's on his way back to the airport to get home. So tomorrow he'll definitely be with me. So I'm doing the show with my guardian angel because I I expected Jesse to come in and I'm standing for the first time this week. My chest cold is getting better. So thank you, Jesus. Got a special show. I'm expecting a call from Dr. Rick Fitzgibbons. He's the, the author of the book Habits for a Healthy Marriage. A handbook for Catholic couples. We did a show a month ago with him, but he's got something else to talk about, and it's suicide prevention for youth and parents. Wow, he's done some really good research on that. But before we do that, every single day here at the Terry and Jesse Show on Virgin Most Powerful, we open up the Bible. We call it soul food. But I said yesterday, ignorance of Scripture is ignorance of Christ. So we're reading from the Gospel of Luke, chapter 13, from the Daily Readings of Mass. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. Jesus passed through the towns and villages, teaching as he went, making his way to Jerusalem. Someone asked him, Lord, will only a few people be saved? He answered them, strive to enter through the narrow gate. For many, I tell you, will attempt to enter, but will not be strong enough. After the master of the house has risen and locked the door, Then will you stand outside knocking and saying, Lord, open the door for us. He will say to you in reply, I do not know where you are from. And you will say, we ate and drank in your company and you we and you taught in our streets. Then he will say to you, I do not know where you are from. Depart from me, all you evildoers. Whoa. And there will be wailing and grinding of teeth. When you see Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, and all the prophets in the kingdom of God, and you yourselves cast out, and the people will come from the east and the west, from the north and the south, and will recline at table in the kingdom of God. For behold, some are last who will be first. And some are first who will be last. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. You know what comes to my mind on that scripture reading, and I'll give you a quote from Lumen Gentium, Vatican II, but, you know, there's lots of surprises when we get to heaven. <laughs> Bishop Sheen says that, that people who are, uh, you're going to be surprised that there aren't people there that you expected to see. And... Oh, not yet. We're going to do Bishop Sheen in a minute. This is another quote from Sheen. People who are there are going to be in heaven. You're going to say, wow, I didn't expect Mike or Mary to be there. And then, of course, there's going to be some people there that you didn't expect to see. And you're shocked. But you know what the biggest shock will be? <laughs> that you're there. And so Bishop Sheen used to always say that when this reading would take place. So I had to give that one to you. Now, I do have a scripture verse that I, I, a quote from Vatican II, and I want to understand that sometimes people misinterpret Vatican II. They call it the spirit of Vatican, but I'm going to read right from it. This is from Lumen Gentium, and it says, Everyone is called to form the part of the kingdom of God, for he desires all men to be saved. That's taken right from the Bible, 1 Timothy chapter 2, verse 4. Those who through no fault of their own do not know the gospel of Christ or his church, but who nevertheless seek God with a sincere heart and they're moved by grace, try in their actions to do his will as they know it through the dictates of their conscience. Those too may achieve eternal salvation. You notice it said may, nor shall divine providence deny the assistance necessary 
for salvation to those who, without any fault of their own, have not yet arrived at the explicit knowledge of God, and who, not without grace, strive to lead a good life. Whatever good or truth is found among them is considered by the church to be a preparation for the gospel and given by him who enlighten all men that they may at length have life. Now, here's the bad interpretation of Vatican II. Everybody's going to be saved. You see, it says it right there. No, it doesn't. It says that they may be saved, but we as Christians have to go and evangelize those people because if we're not evangelizing them and giving them the gospel, hey, it's a possibility that they can go to heaven without you know, us going there and evangelizing them. But that doesn't relieve us of that obligation because let's face it, 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 it says may receive through a special grace of God that through no fault of their own. But I'll tell you whose fault it is. If, you have, if you're not evangelizing like they are down in South America where a bishop said that in 25 years I haven't, uh, haven't baptized one indigenous person in the Amazon, see, that's a bad interpretation of Vatican II. Sorry, Bishop, but I'm just a layman. You can call me Joe Sixpack, but I read the document and you're dead wrong. We have a moral obligation to evangelize. Yes, I wrote a book on it called How to Share Your Faith with Anyone. And I have uh, the documents of Vatican II, the teachings of 2,000 years that says, go and baptize in the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. So anybody who says it's not, you're not supposed to go out and baptize people because, you know, who are we to, like we have some special teaching. They're full of baloney. Okay, now let's bring Bishop Sheen into the room, please. With that day. Pull Sheen ahead. Now, here's what Bishop Sheen has to say on the topic of judgment, since that scripture verse was talking about judgment. Check this out, folks. There are three different ways in which we may judge others. One, with our passions, our reason, and our faith. Our passions induce us to love those who love us. That's true. Our reason makes us love all people with certain limitations. Oh, yeah. But our faith makes us love everyone, including those who do us harm and who are our enemies. You know what? That means the ISIS people I love. Yeah, they're my enemies because they want to kill Christians. But I love them with the truth of the gospel. And that's one of the reasons why it's important to really understand that people don't care how much you know until they know how much you care. It's so important that we go out and evangelize. And I'll tell you what why I say that. I have I have always good news for you. You know me, I'm I'm a good news guy. And here's my good news. The Pope grants a plenary indulgence for praying at the ordinate masses this Sunday. Now I go every Sunday to the Sacred Heart Chapel in downtown Covina. And why do I do that? Because I love the Mass. It's a beautiful, reverent Mass. But I want to encourage you to come at 9 o'clock on Sunday because you get a special indulgence. And I'm going to explain... If, is, is Dr. Gibbons on yet, Mr. Engineer? Not yet. I want to explain that the Holy Father has uh, given this indulgence for Sunday, November 3rd, uh, for any of the communities of the ordinate masses. Well, we have ours in Covina, right here at the Sacred Heart Chapel. Now, the plenary indulgence authorized by Pope Francis marks the 10th anniversary of Pope Benedict's apostolic constitution, creating three new personal ordinates. And so they're dioceses. So they're right in with the church. They're part of the Catholic Church. These are Anglicans who wanted to become Catholic. Now, I want you to explain that if you open up your catechism, It'll explain what an indulgence is. It's a remission before God of the temporal punishment due to sins whose guilt has already been forgiven, which the faithful Christian who is duly disposed under certain prescribed conditions through the actions of the church, which is as the minister of redemption, dispenses and applies with the authority and the treasures and satisfaction of Christ and the saints. Now, if you open up your catechism to paragraph 1471, you can read... A, a real clear explanation on indulgences. But Pope Benedict XVI and Pope Francis have been very supportive of the ordinate and the restoration of the Anglican tradition to full communion. So I, I say this for you to come to the chapel here at the Sacred Heart Chapel in downtown Covina 
where we have a 9 a.m. Mass. I'd love for you to come, because once you come to the ordinate Mass, you're not going to want to go to, I think, a lot of other parishes. And I'll tell you why. Because we have a reverent Mass. And you know what? Uh, it's so good for your children to see that when you go to Mass, there's reverence. Like, for example, we don't receive Holy Communion in the hand. We receive Holy Communion on the tongue and kneeling. And let's face it, with that Pew Research report that came out on people not knowing and believing in the real presence, mom and dad, take the kids to the ordinate Mass at 9 o'clock on Sunday if you're in Southern California. Look them up on the Internet. They're all over the country. But I just believe that there's an old axiom that says the way you worship is the way you believe. Well, now I realize I can see Dr. Fitzgibbons is on with us. Dr. Uh, Fitzgibbons, welcome to the Terry and Jesse show. Great being with you again. You're a good man. You know what I love about you, Doc? You're on what? fire. Yeah, because we, we're a little over the top, okay? Sometimes when I interview people, they're like, oh, uh, yes, no. Come on! This is the truth <laughs> of the gospel we're talking about. We and and I want to say this before we break. Folks, get yourself a cup of coffee, probably stronger coffee than normal, because what <laughs> the good doctor is going to be talking about is a very serious topic, which is suicide prevention for our youth and also the parents. This document he sent to me, I read it and I weeped because I realize mm. that we're in trouble. And you know what St. John Paul II said about the family? He said in 1994, the letter to the families, the way the family goes is the way the culture goes. Well, let's mm -hmm. face it, we're in trouble. So when we come back from the break, we're going to ask the good doctor some, some questions regarding uh, prevention for suicide for youth and parents. You're listening to the Terry and Jesse Show. Jesse's on his way back from California. He's on an airplane, but he'll be back tomorrow. So I have my guardian angel, and I also have the good doctor with me. You're going to love this show. But you know why? Because it's going to inspire you to do things that are going to help live holy lives. And also, for your children's sake, this is going to be important. So we'll be right back with the good doctor. Welcome, Daniel. You're on the line. What's on your mind, brother? Hi, I just wanted to share a testimony about Virgin Most Powerful Radio. I had a buddy at work who, you know, he's a lukewarm Catholic guy, and I wanted him to start listening to the Terry and Jesse show, so I kept telling him to download the app, and he kept putting me off. So one day, I grabbed his phone, and I downloaded the app <laughs> for him. I went on vacation, and you know, I kept telling him to listen to it. He was kind of put me off. I came back from vacation. He comes to my cubicle and he says to me, hey man, I've been listening to Terry and Jesse's show and it's great. And it's uh, made a big impact in his life. The guy, he's going to weekly adoration a couple times a wow. week. He goes to the mass in the morning. Mm -hmm. and, uh, he's an uh, on fire Catholic and he promotes uh, the Terry and Jesse show and the Virgin Most Powerful Radio. Wow. Daniel, what a testimony, and I want to encourage our listeners to get those cards by going to virginmostpowerfulradio.org and uh, do what Daniel's doing. Go out and spread the faith by inviting people to listen to Virgin Most Powerful. Daniel, thanks for your testimony, brother. God love you. You're welcome. In Luke 7, Jesus said, I tell you, her many sins have been forgiven her because she has been shown great love. According to St. John of the Cross, Christians should always remember that the value of their good works is not based on number and excellence. Their value is based on the love for God that prompts them to do the works. May we always be motivated by true love for God and not worry so much about what we do, but why we do it. or selling your home or your business property? This is Terry Barber. Real Estate for Life underwrites the Terry and Jesse Show. And they can connect you to one of 900 pro-life real estate agents around the world. And when they receive their referral fee, they will give 80% of it to a pro-life organization. Wow! That's 80%. Realestateforlife.org 877-LIFE-US1 Welcome back to the Terry and Jesse Show. To join the conversation, call 888 526 2151. Now, 
Here's Terry and Jesse. Welcome back to the Terry and Jesse show. You know, we always like to say we're too blessed to be stressed. We're too anointed to be disappointed. And if hope was money, we'd be billionaires. Why? Because we are in love with Jesus Christ and his bride, the church. We know the end of the story. We win. I'm getting a lot of texts from people and communications about what I just mentioned about Pope Grant's plenary uh, indulgence for praying at the ordinate mass this Sunday. And people are saying, what happens if I'm not a member? Can do I still get it? Yes. Come to mass 9 a.m. at the Sacred Heart Chapel. You'll get it. I'll be there. I'd love to shake your hand, too. We have our good friend. He's becoming a good friend, Dr. Uh, Rick Fitzgibbons. He's the author of a book that I mentioned last month, Habits for a Healthy Marriage. Folks, you need to get that book from Ignatius Press. Okay, I'm pushing you. Why? Because, again, the way the family goes is the way the culture goes. Good marriages breed a good culture, a good economy. And I mean a good economy. Why do I say that? Are you ready for this, folks? No. We have 110 million people in America that have STDs, sexually transmitted diseases. The, the government says we spend $16 billion a year taking care of those folks. See, if you live the Catholic faith and we call fidelity in marriage, we're not going to be spending that money on all that, all the contraception that's caused people's problems. Doc, I'm sure the doc probably won't make as much money, but I bet you he's okay with that. Dr. Yes. Fritz, what do you think of that? Uh, is that a fair statement? Would you be okay if people were just living Catholic life and your your business would go down because of all the problems that you're not going to have to face? Tell me. Well, absolutely. You're totally right. I mean, there's a big study of Harvard of 5,000 teenagers. Yep. Those who, those who went to church on Sunday and prayed regularly had one-third less sexually transmitted diseases you, than others and less, less substance abuse disorders. Doctor, tell me, your document you sent to me, I t- said this, it blew me away when I read all these statistics. You've really done your homework. I mean, the mental health crisis in America, especially Not with terrible. the youth, is shocking. Can you it's tell shocking. us a little bit about this? So what happened about a, a month ago, I picked up the Wall Street Journal yeah. and I see this article and it said between 2007 mm-hmm. and 2017, the suicide rate among people's ages 10 to 24 grew 56 yeah. percent. I almost fell over. I bet. I knew it had grown, but I didn't know it had grown that high. So I thought, I've got to, I've got to write about this. Good. I've got to look at this because this is this is extremely, extremely troubling. Mm-hmm. And we've got to look at this. We can't deny the severity of the crisis we have. Right. You know, all families are not the same. We need to look in the family and look at parents mm-hmm. and the whole culture. What's going on? There's something really wrong here in regard to protecting the health of young adults and adults, for that matter, because the suicide rate among women increased by 50 percent. That's right. So wow. we have serious, serious problems in this culture that need to be addressed. And the reality is that there's a body of research that shows yes. that faith helps people with their psychological health. A big study at Harvard, 5,000, 6,000 Catholic women. Yeah. None of them followed, ever had committed suicide. Yep. This is not to say that Catholic women, those who went to Mass every week, that is. Yes. This is not to say that Catholic men and women can't become depressed, severely depressed. But there's a protective benefit to faith. And that we need to consider incorporating into treatment programs for our youth and for other people. Well said. Now, also, this whole as- aspect of the epidemic of depression and other psychiatric disorders related to suicide, there's a professor, Dr. Jean uh, from San Diego State University. She also yeah. presented some very, I mean, overwhelming statistics that show we're in deep trouble. Can you share about oh, that? Oh, yeah. yeah. Yeah, she showed so many things that have just skyrocketed. Major depression, yeah. 20 to 20 years old, depression growing by 69%, 16 to 17 year olds. Just major, major jumps in severe depression and suicide, suicide attempts and suicidal thinking yeah. in young people, like really shocking increases and in all the severe mental illness, the kind of mental illness that makes a young person think this, Jer- uh, Terry, yes. why, why bother? Exactly. Why bother? Exactly. Why, 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 why should I live? I have this disabling anxiety. I don't have a sense of home. I don't have a sense of family. Yep. I don't see any possibility of having a loving, healthy future. But why continue living? Well, one of the shocking statistics in 2017 is she said that one out of five 12 to 17 year old girls has experienced major depression in the previous year. And I mean, that's 20 yeah. percent. That was shocking. I, I mean, that, that, here's my question to you, Doc. And, and that is. 
what is causing it? Is it the smartphone? Is it uh, not communicating with friends? Is it is it the internet? Is it uh, divorce? What's going on here? Well, it's many of these factors you just mentioned. To me, there's absolutely no question that divorce yeah. and the collapse of the nuclear family yeah. is a leading cause mm. of sadness and depression. Not only that, but it's a leading cause of hopelessness. Yeah. You know, as I cited in my book, in the Catholic Church, 1969, we had 420,000 Catholic marriages. Yes. In 2016, 144. And 420 to 144. It's a bigger population. Part of that, yeah. Part of that is young people don't believe marriage can work. Yep. They, 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 you know, they don't trust enough in marriage. We don't hear enough preaching about the sacrament of marriage and the enormous benefits of the sacrament of marriage. They way outweigh cohabitation. So we have this major enemy of marriage today is cohabitation. And young people try it out, last a year, two years, but there's no grace in that relationship. The idea of two people becoming one yeah. with all their personality traits and weaknesses without God, I mean, it's almost laughable. Well, you it's know, like, I'm sorry to interrupt. Happen? I'm sorry to interrupt you, but you get you, your book, Habits for a Healthy Marriage. Okay, I read that, and your statistics there about people who come from divorced families. It's oh, like yes. uh, it's it's devastating to think. Uh, you know what I tell my kids? I'll be honest with you. Tell me I'm all wrong. I said, kids, they're all adults now. They've got you know they're into relationships right now. I said, look, don't. <laughs> I said this. I know this is really strong. Don't get married to someone who comes from a broken family because. The statistics are so bad that don't think you're going to be the rare one that's going to work for. Get somebody who's in an intact right. family where okay. mom and – am I wrong or right on that? I mean, uh, Well, because here, here, normally I would say, yeah, but the yellow light. I would say yellow light. But what I would say to your children is have that person you're attracted to talk to me. <laughs> talk to Terry. And he, you talk to Terry. And yeah. Terry's going to help you understand yeah. what marriage is. Marriage is not what the culture says. Exactly. It's not about me, 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 me. Right on. It's, about a, it's a sacrament – you, you give yourself totally. It's demanding, but it's very beautiful. It's very, it makes people happy and fulfilling if you work on it. If you don't work on it, if you think, oh, my husband or wife has to make me happy, I don't have to do anything, well, then they're, they're, you've got a really major problem here. Doctor, you have a written here where it says parental um, divorce. You said happiness and hope in youth are dependent upon being in a home in which the parents love each other. The flow of the love between the father and the mother brings comfort, security, confidence to the youth. Its absence, and worse, the absence of a parent, can create intense sadness and fear that one may never have a stable relationship in the future. Is that a fair statement? It's a total fair statement. Wow. So many of the young people have catastrophic thinking. The big research out in Orange County, mm -hmm. Judith Wallerstein, you know, young people very happily married. Yeah. But even though they're happily married, they regularly fight off the fear, Terry, that the bottom is going to fall out. Yep. The fear that the bottom could fall out tomorrow because what happened with our parents we think could happen to us. This is why in this article that I sent you, yes. it is so important that the parents recognize their serious responsibility yeah. in justice to God, to their vows, to their children, to stop giving up so quickly on marriages. You know, in most marriages – only one person is unhappy. Yeah. The other person is happy in the marriage. You know, So there's something there. If the, the person who's thinking about leaving the marriage, if you're listening to this show, please don't leave your marriage. No. Work on your marriage and look at yourself. Look at the weaknesses you brought into the marriage that maybe you need to work on by growing in virtues and growing in grace. Well said. Well said. You know, doctor, I've read enough articles from secular sources, and they're trying to convince people that there's no difference between – a kid's coming from a monogamous family, a mom and dad a commitment for life versus kids that come from a divorced family. Where are they getting their statistics from, Doc? Is this just well, made Well, so there's a tremendous bias here. What's the bias? <laughs> yeah, what, we, had, we had a study of 10,000 teenagers a number of years ago. Yeah. They didn't break it down into intact families or single parent families. Uh, One of my colleagues, a leading marriage scholar in the United States, asked for the data. Yeah. They wouldn't give it to him. Political correctness, huh? They would not give him the data. Wow. They don't want to present. They want to cover it up. But we know clearly the research is clear. Yeah. A third more suicidal thinking than young men whose parents divorce. 6,600 young men study. This is, there is a hopelessness that can go with divorce. Wow. Because here's the reality. Tell me. Most marital conflicts can be resolved. That's right. It's not, you know, most marital conflicts, the decision to divorce is usually not caused by some aggressive anger. 
It's caused by a certain feeling of loneliness or incompatibility. Those things can be changed. Marital trust can grow. Amen. Marital communication and the friendship can get better. Amen. Well, when we come back from the break, I'm going to ask uh, Dr. Fitzgibbons, and he's the author of this book, Habits for a Healthy Marriage. Uh, Doc, I should get paid commissions on selling this book <laughs> because everywhere I go now and speaking, I talk about your book because, I, I mean, I quote St. John Paul II's letter to the family. I mean, the way the yes. family goes is the way the culture goes. So Absolutely. You've got to have holy marriages. And Absolutely. so I would encourage people to get the book from Ignatius Press and uh, and read it and share it. This is a great book to give to couples who are engaged to get married. I, I'll give you one more book, Three to Get Married by Archbishop oh, yes. Fulton Sheen. Okay. Outstanding. Yep. And so when we come back from the break, I'm going to talk to the good doctor in regards to selfishness and social media. What's that all about? Also, I want to remind everybody the Spiritual Warfare Conference is coming up January 11th. We're filling up fast. Now, we've got a huge church that will hold about 850 people. Mm. So we've got a, a, you know, a bigger venue this year, but it's filling up. So if you want to come, you either go on to the Virgin Most Powerful Radio dot org and sign up there or call 877-526-2151. And don't forget to look at on the website events coming up because Father Joe Fessio from Ignatius Press is coming for an Adoramus conference. It's a liturgy conference in March. He's going to talk on the Easter Tritium. And remember what I said earlier in the gospel today? The way you worship is the way you believe. Mom and Dad, again, bring your kids to masses that are reverent. And, you know, you can vote with your pocketbook. I'm not opposed to that. I don't think the doctor is. I think people, we need to support parishes that are going to be loyal to Holy Mother and the perennial teachings of the church. Okay, I said it. Now, do I get in trouble saying that? So what? The bottom line is, right now, the family's in crisis, and we need to support the family the best we can. And good liturgy is a very good way. Don't forget what I mentioned earlier, if you just tuned in. The Anglican Ordinate Mass here at the Sacred Heart Chapel in Covina, the Holy Father has given a plenary indulgence for anyone. You don't have to be a member to come, to get the indulgence. Come to Mass at 9 o'clock on Sunday. I hope I have to open up the choir loft to fill people up, you know, to p- fill the chapel up with people. Because you know what? This is the graces that are available to us, and we need actual grace right now and sanctifying grace to be able to persevere in our marriages and in our family life. And the other thing I'm going to mention before the break All you folks, this is the end of the month. Every time I look at the end of the month, I look at our bills. And I want to thank you, our monthly supporters, because guess what? I'm paying the bills because of you. Not for me. I get to pay them because monthly supporters pay it. If you want to become a monthly supporter, go to Virgin Most Powerful or call 877-526-215. When we come back with the good doctor, we're going to talk about selfishness and social media. How is that dealing with suicide in our culture. Don't turn that dial. Get yourself another cup of coffee. You might need it. We'll be right back. We have an exciting story for you to listen to, the story of John Pridmore. John Pridmore was a hitman for the gangs in East London. I met some guys who seemed to have everything that I thought would make you happy. So I started working for these people, so to my shame I was involved in vicious crime of all sorts. He collected debts for the gangs, and if people didn't pay their debts, it was his job to kill them. And as I drove home that night, I thought, what have I become that I could kill someone and not even care? He was in the elevator on his way up to the 17th floor, and there was a 17-year-old young man in the elevator with him. Suddenly, this young man looked John right in the eye, and he said, Jesus loves you. And I said the first prayer I'd ever said. I said, up to now, all I've done is take from you, God. Now I want to give. Within a year, by the grace of God, John was able to get out of the gang and be freed from this road to hell that he had been walking on. Go to Virgin Most Powerful YouTube channel and listen to this story today. This is Terry Barber. I want to invite you to take advantage of having your funeral or your loved one's funeral at the Sacred Heart Chapel in downtown Covina. It's a 115-year-old church, beautiful chapel. 
And all you got to do is call me at 661-972-7872, and I'll personally make the arrangements with your mortuary to have your funeral or your loved one's funeral here at Sacred Heart Chapel. You won't regret it. 661-972-7872. God love you. Buying or selling your home or your business property? This is Terry Barber. Real Estate for Life underwrites the Terry and Jesse Show. And they can connect you to one of 900 pro-life real estate agents around the world. And when they receive their referral fee, they will give 80% of it to a pro-life organization. Wow, that's 80%. Realestateforlife.org, 877-LIFE-US1. Welcome back to the Terry and Jesse Show. To join the conversation, call 888-526-2151. Now, here's Terry and Jesse. Welcome back to the Terry and Jesse Show. This is a fascinating interview with the good Dr. Fitzgibbons about uh, the family, about marriage, about suicide, all these things about the family is so important. And I want you to know if you had a question to ask him, you're welcome to call 888-526-2151. But I want to, I, I made a promise at the break that we'd talk a little bit about selfishness and social media. Doctor, tell us a little bit about some of those issues regarding the healthy family life. So one of the major enemies of marriage is selfishness. Mm. So selfishness turns us in upon ourselves. Mm -hmm. So we have this epidemic of young guys Instead of dating, instead of looking at marriage, they're home with their video games, with their pornography, with their marijuana. Yeah. They're totally turned in upon themselves. These are the men and women. Track it out. These are the ones who can be very vulnerable to suicidal thinking in their 40s. Yeah. Okay, in their 20s, in their 30s, this seems great. Selfishness is not good. It's really harmful. And Dr. Jean Twang, yep. from out your way, shows that it just it's associated with, and all the media so associated with significant mental illness because you turn in on on yourself if you want to be happy you've got to relate to people you've got to engage people furthermore as pope benedict wrote selfishness makes the heart grow cold and we're seeing that all over the place people just seem preoccupied in their own worlds they seem indifferent to others and cold so we have big trouble in excessive use of the social media psychologically well said. You know, Bishop Sheen in his Life is Worth Living series that we have says, first of all, people who are, you know, they sometimes people wake up and say, good God, it's morning, or good God, it is morning. And he says, <laughs> how do you help a person? Go out, go out and help your neighbor. That's how it's going to help you. Mm -hmm. And so you're saying the same thing. And, you know, I also want to ask you about, I mean, narcissism in our culture. I mean, everything advertised in our culture, it's all oh, about God. me, baby. Totally me. Yeah. Totally me. Most people think marriage is all about me. I know. That's... Most people have, we need our priest to preach the truth about John Paul's teaching about marriage. Yes. Marriage is about we. It's about becoming, you know, one with another person. A sacramental bond is there. Get your spouse to heaven. Get your children to heaven. It's tremendously rewarding and demanding. But it's not about me. It's about we. And so one of the major problems I see, Terry, is parents. Yeah. Catholic parents don't correct their kids for this. Yeah. I can't believe it. They do not correct them when the selfishness is strong. They've got to, one of the reasons is because they only have two kids. Yeah. They're almost afraid to correct them yeah. because the family's become so small. And that's another problem with selfishness. The Catholic family, instead of having four or five kids, yeah. has had two children. Yeah. And so we have a major harm to the Catholic community because of that. You nailed it, Doc. How you nailed it. Hey, let me move to another topic because I'm moving through this article fast. I realize it. But, Good. Uh, loneliness. Give us a little topic. I mean, we see so many oh, young people that are lonely, and I'm going, really? Oh, How is that? Not? Lonely. Yeah. So what we just talked about, Terry, is one of the major reasons for that. All this turning in upon themselves yeah. is a major reason for loneliness. We need to be with people. We don't need to communicate, especially when you're young. Yeah. And I can't believe these teenage girls not being with their friends, not talking on the phone. Oh, no, no. We don't talk on the phone. We just text each other. Terrible. And, you know, the t t teachers at school say wrong. The principals say wrong. But this has to be really corrected. You've got to spend time t with your friends mm -hmm. or talking to them on the phone, seeing them, not just using you know the, the social media. So this this loneliness has become 
really terrible in our culture. I think it's one of the leading reasons why people feel like giving up. They, their, their parents' marriage hasn't worked. In relationships, everybody's hooking up or cohabiting. There's no sense of loyalty, and especially the female heart. Young women, this explosion of suicide, and particularly young women, because they've been repeatedly used by others, then they feel so lonely, they feel they'll never have a stable, loving relationship. You know, Doc, lives. you're nailing it, but I also see one more thought that's not in the article. Tell me if I'm up on the right spot. A lot of young people I talk to think that they have to look like the models on TV. Well, there it is. That's okay. it. Am I onto something there? No, you're totally onto something. So body image is ridiculous. You, you know, it. body image, you know, you, you, know, you become, a, become a, a psychologically healthy person not by having the perfect body yeah. working out every day. You become a psychologically healthy person from a Christian perspective by becoming more Christ-like. Yeah. The more Christ-like you become, the happier you are because you enjoy giving yourself to people. Life has meaning. If you're all about yourself, Terry, life does, you don't have a sense of mission. You're just totally turned in upon yourself. You think you're your body. You you're know much it. more than your body. And I will add, before I get to this next topic on contraception, I'll just give an experience. I've been married over 30 years. My mm -hmm. wife and I read Casti Canubi, which is a document from the Holy Father of the 30s, on marriage, and then Bishop Sheen's Three to Get Married. And it really helped us realize that God had to be a big part of our marriage. And what you said about serving each other, we that's what my wife and I try to do. Now, here's something I've done for over 30 years. Are you ready, folks? You can start doing this, Mr. Johnson or whoever I'm, you know, wh man, do this. Get your wife a cup of coffee every single morning. <laughs> now, my wife likes water. So I get up at what, 5 o'clock in the morning, and when she gets out of bed, she knows she's got a cup of water for 30-some years sitting there with love and devotion from me. And oh, that's I know when I go back, come back from mass in the morning, every single day for over 30 years, I'm going to have my, she gives me this shake, okay, that has all the vitamins. She kind of wants me to stick around and be healthy, okay? <laughs> so, so here's my point. She gives that in love and devotion back to me. And you know what? That's not even, I get a big hug out of that because I say thank you every day for your love and devotion for mm. serving me. And this is something as simple. You go, what do you, I mean? Are you kidding me, Terry? Yeah. Give me a break. Yeah. This is what's vital to life. The flow of love between a husband and a wife. The flow of love between is, is a vital. And people fall into the selfish trap of being a prisoner of pornography, yeah. being a prisoner of marijuana. Right. Those things make you, they make you turn in upon your, we know marijuana, high potency marijuana is yeah. causing an explosion of paranoid illness, mental illness. It's causing people's ability to trust the bottom out. You're nailing it because it's like 23 times more potent than it oh, was back in the 60s. Yes. Doc, here's something I know from your book. And again, I'm going to have a plug. I don't get, hey, <laughs> the plug is Habits for a Healthy Marriage, Handbook for Catholic Couples. You know what? I'm your spiritual fitness trainer. Guess what I'm going to ask you to do, mom, dad? Get the book for the family. Read it. I'm going to make a suggestion. Read it with your wife. Have your wife Perfect. read one chapter. And gentlemen, you read the next chapter. That's how Perfect. my wife and I sometimes read books. We'll read to each other. And it's really a great way to do it. All right, Doc, here's my next topic. Contraceptives. This 2016 study in Denmark. Tell us about it. So we had a 2016 study in Denmark of a million women. Yeah. And the, what, the, what did the results show? That there was a marked association between the use of hormonal contraceptives mm -hmm. with subsequent de, de, uh, sub, with subsequent antidepressant use mm -hmm. in depression in a psychiatric hospital. Mm -hmm. Those most at risk were teenagers. Wow. The next year, another study, yeah. a half a million. And we found that those who used hormonal contraceptives, that the risk of suicide was markedly increased in the adolescent girls. So there's something about the use. And so the authors, professors of OBGYN said young people have to be warned. Now that this research is out, it's never been documented like this before. Young people have to be warned about the risks of severe depressive illness from the use of these drugs. Mm -hmm. My own view is why it happens is because from the use of these drugs, especially these adolescent females yeah. in the hookup culture, they feel used sexually, used sexually, used. The guys don't care about them. Exactly. They use them. They don't really care. Before, there was a sense of young men having a sense of mission or purpose. I want to find the right woman. I want to get married. 
I want to have a family, a home and children. That sense of mission has been, been caved in because of all the selfishness, the pornography, the lack of proper teaching in the Catholic Church on marriage. You nailed it. And I got to tell you, most of my phone calls and on the Internet questions on our website deal with marriage, Doc. And one of the things oh. people come to me with the women, they say, I just want to be respected and not feel like I'm being used. Right, are you exactly. kidding me? What you're just saying? These are married couples. So so here's what happens when use of contraceptives. Go ahead. Huge problems in married life. Yeah. The man, you know, doesn't think he can come. He's worked hard. He comes home. He doesn't think he has to pay attention to romantic love. Right. Nor to the friendship, but he's entitled to sexual intimacy. Exactly. Okay? He doesn't do what you did, be a, a friend, a loving, cheerful giver to his wife. And the wife comes to resent that. She feels used as a sexual object. That's right. Men need to learn from you, Jerry, Terry. <laughs> you got to be get, cheerfully giving to your wife. So, so every day, guys, if you're listening to this. Think about this. What Terry talked about: be cheerfully giving to your wife. Absolutely, you've got to be giving. And many men model after fathers who aren't giving. That's the last chapter: overcoming baggage that you pick up in, in the past. And what he said last chapter: it's habits for a healthy marriage. Again, you got to go to Ignatius Press to pick that up. Doc, uh, we got a couple more questions uh, in this interview. But we're going to take a quick break, but I'll just set the, I'll tease everybody. This is something that's a big problem in our culture, excessive anger. And what oh. does anger do in the family? And also, with, what does anger do with depression? I, I think there's a connection, but I want to totally. just uh, ask that question when we come back. But I want to also plug something today, and that is, again, if you come to the Sacred Heart Chapel at 9 o'clock for Mass on Sunday, there's a plenary indulgence given by Pope Francis to the uh, Anglican ordinate mass. And here's what I'm going to do. I'm teasing you. This mass is so reverent. It's basically the old Trinitine mass, but it's in English. And we receive Holy Communion kneeling down, not in the hand, only on the tongue. The homily is outstanding. The singing, you think you died and went to heaven. All right, here's my last teaser for the mass. At the end of mass, the choir sings the Angelus. And you think, mm. what? There's angels up there. Come on, Troy, I'm trying to get you to come to Mass because I believe that when you start coming with your family, we got a lot of young families coming. You know, there's no talking after Mass in the church like a lot of parishes have because we believe in the real presence of Christ in the Eucharist. We need to bring this back. And that's why here at Virgin Most Powerful, we've welcomed the Anglican ordinate. We've got the uh, the 11 o'clock Mass with the, um, with the Melkites, and that's another beautiful liturgy. And I just want to encourage you to come on Sunday at 9 a.m., especially because of the indulgence that are given at that Mass. And you don't have to be a member to do that. Last thing I'll mention before we break, I always want to thank you at the end of the month, especially those who have been supporting us. We just put new floors in. We took out all the carpet at the chapel. If you want to make a little donation to help us cover the cost of the restoration of a 115-year-old church, Go ahead and do it because right now I got a plumbing problem right after Mass. The guy's here now. I can't wait to get that bill. Hey, you <laughs> want to call us? Call me at 661 972 7872. Yes, I'm crazy. I'm the only guy that gives his cell number out for about 15 years on Catholic radio. You think I get a few calls? Yes, and I love to talk with you. If I can help you, I'm there to serve. When we come back, we'll be back with Dr. Fitzgibbons talking about depression. Don't turn that dial. Hi, this is Terry Barber. I want to share with you a wonderful program called The Legacy of Love and Devotion. Well, what is it? Well, it's where you share your life and love of your Catholic faith with your family for the next century and beyond. Let's face it. Our Lord is going to call you home at some time. And how are you going to evangelize your relatives in the future? Well, by coming into my studio by a telephone call and telling your story of how you love Jesus and Mary and the church and giving information to your great grandchildren and beyond their love for the Catholic faith. How does it work? I'm going to tell you more if you call me on my cell phone, 661-972-7872, and I'll give you all the details of how you can pass on your Catholic faith to the next generation and the following generations. A very unique program. I want to tell you more about it. Call me at 661-972-7872. God love you.
Sirach 11.24 says, Do not say I am self-sufficient. What harm can come to me now? According to St. Catherine of Siena, presumption is like vermin burrowing at the root of the tree of our soul. If we do not uproot it with great care and humility, it will eventually destroy the soul. May God keep us from all presumption of mind and heart and realize that we depend on Him for everything. Buying or selling your home or your business property? This is Terry Barber. Real Estate for Life underwrites The Terry and Jesse Show. And they can connect you to one of 900 pro-life real estate agents around the world. And when they receive their referral fee, they will give 80% of it to a pro-life organization. Wow! That's 80%! Realestateforlife.org, 877-LIFE-US-1. Welcome back to the Terry and Jesse Show. To join the conversation, call 888-526-2151. Now, here's Terry and Jesse. Welcome back to the Terry and Jesse Show. I have the good Dr. Fitzgibbons. He's the author of Habits for a Healthy Marriage, from published by Ignatius Press. We're talking about depression. We're talking about suicide. And one of the questions I asked before the break was about excessive anger. Doc, how does that tie into depression? So here's how it goes. The major causes of anger are these. Yeah, Sadness yeah. causes excessive anger. Okay. Anxiety causes excessive anger. Yep. Insecurity causes excessive anger. Uh -huh. Selfishness causes excessive anger. Makes okay. Sense. So the two go together. So numerous studies have shown high irritability, high anger is associated with suicide. So you have this inner anger, hostility. You take it out on others. You take it out on yourself. What has to happen here is this. The, the mental health field has to use forgiveness in treating these people in the home. Parents have to talk about forgiveness, guys. Mm -hmm. We're about forgiveness. Mm -hmm. We're not ex about expressing anger. Mm -hmm. We're about forgiving like the Lord told Peter seven times 70. Amen. When you work at forgiving, the anger diminishes. Research has shown my colleague at the University of Wisconsin. Yeah. Anger diminishes, sadness diminishes, anxiety diminishes. Forgiveness is a powerful, anti the most powerful anecdote, Jerry to anger and, and, and treating depressive illness. So it's we gotta really recognize that we need to have we need a, we need new programs in what well, we need families, we need national programs. We need Catholic families to recognize the importance of teaching virtues, generosity, self denial, the selfishness, and forgiveness for excessive anger and for feelings of hopelessness. You know, I through Lighthouse Catholic Media, which I founded, oh, I guess ten years ago. No, more than ah. that now. Long year, not many years ago, we had a CD called "The Hidden Power of Forgiveness" by Deacon Bob McDonald, and I'm going to oh. give that away. If somebody wants a download of that, just call eight seven seven five two six two one five one. I'll have the guys send that a link to you because that that particular CD, I think we've distributed about four hundred thousand copies. Wow! Could, and, could I recommend this too? That your listeners could go to marital. MaritalHealing.com. There you go. My website is a great Excellent. explanation of how you use anger for past Perfect. hurts and immediate hurts, immediate forgiveness exercises. Perfect. Here's how that works. You don't talk angrily to your wife or your children there you go. until inwardly you keep thinking, forgive, forgive, or take my anger. Great. Do not open your mouth until you don't, until you speak gently and kindly. Your wife deserves that. Your children deserve that. And marriage needs that. Well said, well said. I'm going to jump ahead because we're running out of time, and I'd like to at okay, least good. talk about uh, five ways to have hope in, the, in these dark times, okay? I hope if I don't get I'll do it tomorrow. But, Doc, I want to ask you about substance abuse because that's a huge oh, problem boy. in our culture. Here we go. Here we go. So there's no question that substance abuse, we know that marijuana is a gateway drug. Okay? Oh, yeah. It's okay. not an innocent drug. It's Amen. a gateway drug. Okay, the heroin, the opioids. Yep. So it's very important that we – that we recognize in treating these diseases and protecting young people from them, hey, guys, marijuana is not safe to use. Mm -hmm. It predisposes you to other to drugs that harm the brain, that prime the brain for later other drugs. So we've got to, like, recognize the high risk of these drugs in suicide. It's so many – and our neighbor on our street, we had a youngster who took us like college student, mm -hmm. deliberate overdose of heroin. And prior to that, marijuana, okay? Yep, there you go. So we've got to, we've got to like – 
I realized that in dealing with drugs, the, the virtues of faith, hope, and love mm. can be very powerful. Look, nobody got better in treating alcoholism until a faith component was brought in. Powerless over it, turn it over to God. We need to recognize that and bring that in to the programs to try to help young people with opioid addictions and marijuana addiction. Marijuana has to be viewed as a highly dangerous drug. Right. Highly dangerous. Well said. And Father Don Calloway says the exact same thing. And he recovered from drug abuse. And we also have his series. If you want to get something on, on Father Donald Calloway, his conversion, just call the 877-526-2151, how he overcome his drug addiction. Doc, I have a question now. This is the closer, my friend. The benefits uh, of our Catholic faith. Oh Tell boy. me about that, brother. Oh, there are tremendous benefits. And I just mentioned briefly earlier in the program yep. two studies from the Harvard University. Yep. 5,000 adolescents, those yep. who, who had went to religious service and who prayed, had less illicit drug use, fewer depressive symptoms. Mm -hmm. Everything was better. How does that happen? Why does that happen psychologically? It happens for this reason. You have a sense, more of a sense of God as your father. Amen. All right, maybe your father has left. Maybe your parents' marriage is divorced. You can have a sense of the Holy Family as another family. Yep. Our Lady is another loving mother. If your mother isn't there, the Lord is a friend and brother. If you've been bullied by kids or you've been hurt by your own brother. So the faith has enormous benefits in treating with the causes, the deep causes, the hopelessness, the fears, the insecurities, the anxieties that are driving this epidemic of suicide in youth. Wow. Doc, I have to thank you. I want to uh, bring you back soon, so you're probably going to get a text from me. <laughs> no, I'm serious. For, you know, soon, I'm going to aim in the next couple of weeks because I like having you on. you got fire in your belly. You're, oh, yeah. No, God, God wants to act here. No, I can he tell. He doesn't want all these young people committing. <clears throat> no, and we want to help he, them. He doesn't want parents keeping their mouths shut. Right either, on. Right on. Raising their children in virtues and in faith. Dr. Fritz Gibbons, give us a website again, how people can contact you. So maritalhealing.com or childhealing.com. Excellent. Well, I want to thank you for joining us here at the Terry and Jesse show. You've become one of my favorites. And I, okay. I, the reason is, it's not because of the way you part your hair, brother. <laughs> the reason I love you is because you love your Catholic faith and you're doing some, Absolutely. you're doing the work that is so important on the family. Your book, Habits for a Healthy Marriage, I really believe it can turn things around in regards to marriage. Everyone should go to Ignatius Press. If you're waiting for me there, this is the fourth time I've asked, okay? Do it! Go to IgnatiusPress.com, order the book, and I tell you, it will change the way you operate in your family and in your marital life. You can thank the good doctor later. Dr. Fitzgibbon, thanks again for joining us here at the Terry. Terry, great thing with you. God love you, brother. Thank you. Wow, folks, did you like that interview? I sure did. I wanted to leave you on five ways to have hope in these dark times. Why do I say they're dark times? Well, look at the world, folks. There's confusion. There's all kinds of terrible things going on, right? But how do you go through it? You know, we always talk about the five stones. I'll get to that. But number one, nourish your interior life. The men who are going to survive the current crisis in our culture are those, are going to, those people who have a deep prayer life. That those who have an intimate level of intimacy with our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, who pray, especially the rosary, who meditate, who cultivate an interior life, constantly praying. Immerse yourself in spiritual reading. Spend time before our Eucharistic King in adoration, right? I always say that. Seek to know our Lord in a more intellectual way, but open your heart to him and ask for interior knowledge of his care and presence. He will not leave such a prayer unanswered. And ask, and it will be given to you. Knock, and the door will be opened. Seek, and you'll find. That's how you handle this crisis. Have a deeper love for Jesus Christ. Number two, stay close to the Blessed Virgin Mary. She's the greatest of all saints, even the greatest and most marvelous of all creatures, since she is the mother of God, and I might add the mediatrix of all graces. To her, God has given her the promise of crushing the serpent's head. She is a real and living being who loves you and who is powerful beyond your imagination. Stay close to her. Hide yourself under her mantle. She will feed you with the milk of grace. She will defend you from all evil. She will lead you to burning heart of her son. No one who turns to her will be unaided. St. Louis de Montfort said that on True Devotion to Mary. 
have a devotion to Mary. That's important, folks. Now, the number three item, and I always cover these, live a sacramental life every day. You know, what state should you be living in? The state of grace. What state shouldn't you be living in? The state of mortal sin. Live a sacramentally life. You know what? The the important here, important thing is out of living it, that's called confession, receiving uh, Eucharist as often as possible. The source and summit of the Christian faith is the Eucharist. Visit Jesus more often in holy hours. Visits. Because if you're not praying, and think about it, you're in front of Jesus Christ, true God and true man. It's just good time management. Let's just be honest. Number four, check this out. Practice obedience to the truth. Yeah, not my truth and your truth. That's garbage. There's much confusion in the world right now. Many voices clamor for our attention. And many, I'm going to say it, false teachers are spreading lies. But really, for those who want to know the truth, it's not that difficult to discover it. The teachings of Jesus Christ and his Catholic Church that he founded have been abundantly clear by the saints, holy men, martyrs, bishops, priests, and popes for 20 centuries. And in this unprecedented way, we have access to these teachings through an abundance of easily accessible books. You have internet. You have audio teachings. Yes, untruths are spread throughout the world, but unwise, but Unwise, the truth is more easily discovered than ever. So don't give me an excuse saying, well, this pope or this bishop or this priest said this. You know what? Go to the perennial teachings of the church. I've said that for years. Why? Because you need to know as to what the truth will set you free. Last thing, feed yourself with goodness. And now, as St. Paul says, all that rings true, all that commands reverence, all that makes for right, all that is pure, all that is lovely, all that is gracious and telling virtue and merit, whatever is tr- virtue and merit are found, let this be the argument of your thoughts. This is Philippians chapter 4. You cannot maintain peace if you are constantly filling your mind with things that produce anxiety, anger, restless agitation. Shut off the nightly news sometimes, okay? Close the Catholic websites even. You know what I'm saying? Because you can just be on negativity. No. Fill your time with the gospel. Fill your time thinking and praying about God. It's going to help you grow in the love of God and your peace. This doesn't mean you should be ignorant of the evils of the world. not saying that. But we should not let it disturb us. For this is the victory of the enemy of our souls. The saints tell us constantly the peace of heart should be guarded at all times, even in the most terrible storms and trials. Strive to live in the holy and immutable peace. This is St. Padre Peel saying it. We should not allow the enemy to creep into our hearts and rob us of our peace. Our Lord said this, folks, not me. Peace I leave with you. My peace I give to you. Not as the world gives do I give. Let not your hearts be troubled. Right? Fall in love deeper and deeper with Jesus Christ and his bride, the church. Jesse will be back tomorrow, folks. And... Don't forget, on the 11th of November, we start broadcasting to the East Coast on Stations of the Cross. Praise God for that. And keep me, keep it in your prayers because more stations are picking up the Virgin Most Powerful Radio. And I praise God for that. And I praise God for you, our listener. Because you know what? I take this serious. I take it serious because what's the purpose of the church? To get us to heaven. What's the purpose of Virgin Most Powerful? To get to heaven. So again, what state should you be living in? The state of grace. What state shouldn't you be living in? The state of mortal sin. That's it. We're simple. But you know what? No compromise here at Virgin Most Powerful. We're going to tell you the truth in charity. Wow. I just want to thank you again. If you'd like to make a donation, go to virginmostpowerfulradio.org. And if you want to help us with the chapel, I'll give you my cell number, 661 972-7872. Full sheen ahead. God love you. St. Faustina's Prayer for Priests O my Jesus, I beg thee on behalf of the whole Church, grant it love and the light of thy Spirit, and give power to the words of priests, so that hardened hearts might be brought to repentance and return to thee, O Lord. Lord, give us holy priests. Thou thyself maintain them in holiness. 
O Divine and Great High Priest, may the power of thy mercy accompany them everywhere and protect them from the devil's traps and snares, which are continually being set for the souls of priests. May the power of thy mercy, O Lord, shatter and bring to naught all that might tarnish the sanctity of priests. For thou canst do all things. Amen. Virgin Most Powerful, pray for us.